What's up, people? So we got a little one today. Talk about defrost timers. Today, I'm gonna learn you how the defrost timer works in refrigeration. So pay attention, because I'm probably, I don't know, I haven't watched this thing yet. I might say something really stupid. I hope not. And if I do, I hope you figure it out so you do the opposite, huh? Anyhow, uh, if you like the thing, hit the, hit the button deal or whatever. If you don't, then, then don't. Enjoy the video. Catch you on the next one. me starting a video and not climbing a ladder I tell you what it's pretty nice I like having these refrigeration units on the ground all right I did video replacing the compressor in this guy I don't think I posted that I don't know why I may have to dig around figure out what's going on anywho these two guys work together to cool a very large walk-in cooler and it uh, looks like they have a temperature spike at a certain time of the day, every day. Temperature spikes to 49. The temperature that they're trying to maintain is 36 to 46. So when I got here, this fella was in, not in a defrost, but it was right at the edge of a defrost. Man, I tell you what, it took all the old man strength I had to push it into and out of that defrost, but then it started rolling fine on its own. Right here, like, pretty, it's pretty rough, but it was actually further along than that. Anyway, I don't ever want you to think, like, these Paragon defrost timers are not easy to turn once they get close to their defrost time that they're heading on. Um, they get really hard to turn, but the motors in them are designed for that. Uh, the key indicator is that this dude, right now, she was 12, 12 hours off. That's right. And they have no, um, that guy was on point. So we know there wasn't a power outage for 12 hours or both of them would be off. That one was perfectly on time. This one was off time. Um, is that why they had a spike? I don't know. Probably. Probably not. Could be. Maybe not. I do know that it's a bad timer. Um, nobody else comes out to these units but me. And I know the last time I was here, I had the thing set to the right time. So, um, I gotta get these little dealing my bobbers out you missed the fun part all right somebody was hanging around i didn't want to be all weird talking to myself so i went ahead and replaced the timer it's easy people all right it's wire for wire you just get the same one this one was a pretty quick easy no-brainer now if you had one to install that was not uh replacing but sure say you're putting in a brand new one they're not supposed to make these this hard to get out um it would be relatively simple and all you got to do is put the wires on the thing all right read the read the deal all right deal comes in right here tells you what each switch leg does where it goes normally open normally closed so this is a cooler so there are no elements in the evaporator so we're not using uh, heating elements to thaw out ice as you would see in a freezer so we're not going to have to worry about putting elements on where you would put them on like a normally uh, open. You would put them on normally open, which would be three. So that whenever it actually did go into defrost, it would close the normally open and open the normally closed. So that would be your fan load. Um, that's what would happen in, in a freezer. Your fans stop, your elements come on, and everything goes. It's about to get loud. That guy's about to turn on. There it is. I heard the solenoid open. Uh, and luckily, that one's not that loud, so y'all can still hear me. 
but most of these defrost timers, I mean, even if this is a mechanical Paragon, uh, I don't typically use these um, unless I'm replacing one. If I'm going to add one in, I'm going to put in a DTAB40. Uh, I believe it's made by Grassland. I love the DTAB40. It's a great defrost timer, multi voltage. Uh, has all the bills and whistles, right? You get the things. But typically, on all your defrost timers, you're going to have a one, two, three, four, in an X. Okay. Your one and two are going to be a load, line voltage. Sorry. Your X is going to be line voltage. The one and two are jumped together. So all you got to do is touch one of them, right? All right. The other one's just in case you got your power and some other crap, right? So there's our voltage. All right. One and two is one leg, in or yes, in is the other leg. Then you got your three and four, which are your switch legs. One of them's gonna be normally open, one's normally closed. Um, that's gonna control your fans, your defrost heating element, blah, 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 blah. You got your X. X is gonna be your defrost termination switch. Matthew, what is a defrost termination switch? Well, people, that's exactly what it is terminates the defrost whenever your defrost see so you have a, a temperature sensor all right defrost termination um, that's inside the evaporator coil all right and then that thing is going to read the temperature of the evaporator coil and once it gets up to these are not easy to get out once it gets up to a certain temperature it's gonna kick it out of defrost and kick it back into freeze mode, even though it hasn't met its time yet. So if you have a defrost termination and it works properly, it almost doesn't matter what time, how much time you set on the defrost. You can put it for an hour. If it only needs 20 minutes, it's only gonna use 20 minutes. But we're not dealing with that today, people. All right, this is a cooler. There's no defrost termination on a cooler because there are no heating elements. This is a very simple and basic. What this this one does is on the normally closed circuit we have one wire that's going to be number four. That wire goes to the solenoid. Okay now you feeling me? Whenever this thing goes in defrost it takes the power off of the solenoid, so the solenoid closes. When the solenoid closes, the unit pumps down and it stops running. Fans keep going, as they would in any cooler. Um, but that's, yeah, that's the thing. That's the deal, people. It's simple, easy stuff. A lot of people get, uh, a lot of people get a little intimidated by defrost timers, but they're very, very, very simple. Even if you look at the back of this thing, this is how simple they are, all right? Switch leg, boom, when it goes into defrost, this clicks over, touches that, and then that goes away from that. There's your normally open and normally closed legs right there. If you look at this, number four, number four is right here, normally closed. It's not in defrost right now. But whenever we put it in defrost, right, yep, right, here, this whole thing shifts over, closes the normally open, and opens the normally closed. So freaking simple. Um, I don't know how easier to explain that than, than just saying that's, it is literally that easy, people. Um, set this to the right time. We're gonna hit the power, we're gonna walk away. I'm not really worried about anything else going on. Spike was up to 49 degrees. They need to keep it at 46. I did turn the thermostats down by one degree. And I only did one because, you know, the thing around is pretty good, all right? But it's not gonna continue to reach that temperature on one of these condensers, all right? By itself forever. So say this thing got stuck for like three or four hours. That temperature in that cooler is going to climb. And maybe the motors just keep on going and it pops itself out and then it goes into its normal mode. Um, one of these condensers running alone, so this one that I'm looking at right now had a bad compressor, so they're maintaining 48 to 52 degrees inside that cooler running off of one condenser. 
and that one condenser was doing everything it could. Um, so these things do go into defrost, but they don't go at the same time. So I have them staggered. <coughs> one will go into defrost, took a couple hours later, the other one will go into defrost. And then while they're on together for those few hours out of the day, they can maintain the temperature. So if we get the temperature down to 42, you know, 40, then when one of them is in defrost, the temperature is going to climb, but it's not going to climb that much because they're only in defrost. These are set to be in defrost for 40 minutes and they will stay that entire time since we don't have a defrost termination. Um, that's all I got. I don't, I don't think there's any more stuff. This is easy stuff. We didn't go through the thing here. I right, got a transformer here. We've got a fuse. We've got a terminal block. We've got a timer. I hate these guys, by the way. I usually end up bypassing them. <coughs> but they keep it from short cycling. Sorry. I'm sick. All right. Sick and I'm working. And I'm sick of working. I'm just kidding. Uh, no doesn't matter if you're sick or not. You gotta get out and make the money. All right, this is an A419 thermostat, basically an A19 that is digital. All right, simple, easy stuff, easy to use. Contact our auxiliary. The auxiliary probably controls the uh, crankcase heater. And you got your things and your stuff. All the things, all the cool things are here. Simple, this is simple and easy. Refrigeration, I'm about to kick it on. It's probably gonna start. I doubt it's satisfied since I've had it off for a while. Let's do it. Rip, rip, ship. Oh, that did not work. Oh, that did not work. I might have to actually climb. Yep. There we go. Let's see. It is. Thinking, thinking, computing, computing. What do I want to do? Compute, compute. Come on, do stuff. This electronic timer is just thinking. It's like, I don't know what I want to do just yet. Let's see here. We're going to do some flashies back and forth. SP43. I gotta get down lower. There's no room here. Got the thing. That's less than 12 inches of space to work with. Uh, uh, you gotta get on the ground so I can see this thing. ASD. Now I'm gonna have to look that up. See what ASD means. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've messed with one of these A419s. Oh, there we go. I know what ASD means now. It means it's delay. I remember. I remember. They had a different view. How about that view? Huh? Yeah. There's some capacitators. Well, I should check those out every once in a while. <coughs> yeah. That was very sexy, I know. All right. That's all I got for you people. I'm gonna get off the ground. Ugh. I'm gonna go on to the next best thing. You guys have an outstanding day.